Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this short game to the comp video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with NVIDIA, as the company teased the ultimate gaming experience at GTC Taiwan. Q speculation on that's all about. Then we'll move over to the GTX 1050, as yet another GTX 1050 derivative is being readied for release, and this will be a 3 gigabyte model, so we'll discuss its alleged specifications. Then, in the latest of major security whoopses, major OS developers have misread Intel's documentation. So this means that Linux, Windows, Mac, FreeBSD, and other OSs can do really bad stuff to either Intel or AMD-powered computers. And then we're going to discuss a series of acquisitions and rounds of funding that Intel are providing to various startups. And this includes a company known as Lincian Technologies, who are based in California. And it holds key components to being able to produce two NM chips. So with that said, let's just get started. So, NVIDIA are teasing the ultimate gaming experience at GTC Taiwan. And Jensen himself will be appearing on stage in Taiwan on May the 30th, so this is just a couple of days before Computex. And one version of the NVIDIA website, specifically the Taiwanese version, mentions the ultimate gaming experience, and this was picked up on the website IT Home. Now, officially, anyway, GTC 2018 in Taiwan specifically is focused on artificial technology, the thing that NVIDIA have been really driving home, ha ha ha, for the past several months. And the same website is also listing Computex redefining gaming experience, and it is citing the reason behind this being GeForce 10 powered laptops, and of course, also various G-Sync monitors, and this would include the 4K HDR displays. There is not one word about new graphics cards. Honestly, I don't think we're going to be seeing the 11 slash 20 slash whatever series anytime soon. Once again, I'm just going to remind you that just a week or so ago, there was that post on Overclocker UK's forum by a gigabyte representative, and they are saying that there's going to be no new variants of laptops based upon new graphics cards until approaching the end of this year. And while laptop variants of GPUs typically appear one to two months after the desktop versions, at the very least, we're not going to be seeing a new GPU, at least in my opinion. And hey, if I'm wrong, awesome. I don't think we're going to be seeing a new GPU on the market until at least two to three months ahead of now. And Frankly, NVIDIA are in no rush. And this is made even further clear when we look at another piece of news that's popped up. And this has come to us from another website, EXP Review, or EX Preview, depending on how you wish to pronounce it. And this is a Chinese website. And they are certainly not new to producing leaks of decent quality. They actually mentioned last year, the end of last year, there was going to be a cut down GTX 1060. And of course, that turned out to be true. It was a 5 gigabyte model compared to the 6 gigabyte model that we traditionally see with the 1060s. And once again, they are reporting that there's going to be another version of the 1050s. And this is for a market that is specifically designed around the uh, cyber cafe market. So, most G GTX 1050s have a boost clock of 1455 MHz, and this is with 2 GB of RAM that is running at 7 Gbps. Crucially, however, the memory bus is at 128 bit. Now, obviously, because the chips themselves use 32 bit memory controllers, therefore, you have 512 megabyte modules, you have two gigabytes of memory, it all makes sense. However, that can't happen with the same configuration with a three gigabyte model. So there's a couple of different options that NVIDIA have. Option A would be to run the same memory clock speed, 7 Gbps, but with a 96-bit bus, but obviously then you've got a considerably lower amount of memory bandwidth available, just about 84 gigabytes per second. This is compared to... 112 gigabytes per second, so obviously that's quite the drop-off. Another possibility is NVIDIA could run with faster RAM, 
uh, for example, eight or nine GPPS, that's certainly possible. The thing is, those memory modules would obviously be more expensive, but it probably wouldn't be that much more expensive, although I say that without actual knowledge of how much it's costing them per, you know, X number of uh, memory modules to actually purchase. The final potential is they could run with two 512 megabyte chips and two one gigabyte chips. I'm pretty certain that the Pascal architecture can run like that. If it doesn't, please let me know in the comments, but I'm pretty damn certain it can do that. The only issue with that, of course, is it would also bring up the potential price a little bit, but probably not that much more. As for why NVIDIA don't go with the four gigabyte option, well, the reason behind that is probably pretty simple, and that is that they're likely concerned it's going to eat into the GTX 1050 Ti market. The GTX 1050 Ti does have double the amount of memory, once again, four versus two gigabytes of memory, but the memory clock speed is identical. The primary difference, other than the sheer amount of memory here, is the fact that the CUDA cores for the Ti runs at 768 in total, compared to 640 of just the base Vidal GTX 1050. And in ongoing security whoopses, we also have news that every major OS manufacturer has misread Intel's official documentations. So now what they can have in the best case scenario is that attackers could crash either Intel or AMD powered computers. Now you'll notice something I said there, that's the best case scenario. In worst, they could potentially, I'm reading this verbatim, gain access to sensitive memory information or control low-level operating system functionality. If you need a translation for that, it's very bad. They could essentially hijack critical code. They could run their own code. They could look at what you're doing in the background. They basically can do pretty much whatever they want. And these vulnerabilities can be exploited by either malware running on the computer or a user that has gained a login. According to the Vulnerability Notes database, who can be found at certcert.org, we have the following companies which have, or sorry, vendors which are vulnerable. Apple, Dragonfly, BSD, FreeBSD, Linux Kernel, Microsoft, Red Hat, Inc., Suzy, Synology, Ubuntu, VMware, Zen. Fortunately, there are a couple of different OSs which are not affected. And according to CERT, they noted that the, quote, error appears to be due to developers' interpretation of existing documentation. In other words, programmers simply misunderstood what both Intel and AMD's manuals would say, and therefore we have a problem. Fortunately, patches are now being released or are already available to correct the various blunders here. However, in the worst case scenario, what could happen is the... POP SS instruction can be used, leveraged to perform a vulnerability, or rather to utilize this vulnerability. POP SS, by the way, takes a running program stack and puts that number into the CPU stack selector register. So what is supposed to happen is the instruction immediately after POP SS is an interrupt instruction. So the purpose behind that is that you would then use that to do something such as open files or do whatever. And here's where things went wrong. So in the manuals, the, the system designers, the operating system designers misread this. And what they instead thought was that the handler starts on an ininterruptible state, which is pretty much the reverse of what's really going on here. So does that mean you should get your pitchforks for Intel? Does that mean you should get your pitchforks for AMD? No. This is actually one of those cases where it was just simply they read the instructions wrong. Um, and it is what it is, human error and all of that stuff. I will say that although it's a little bit embarrassing for the industry, and certainly there have been a couple of blunders, of course, which have been pretty prevalent in the news recently, Spectre, Meltdown, just to name a few, this is one of those times where I don't really blame AMD and I certainly don't blame Intel. They had the documentation there and it was simply read wrong. However, I will also say one thing in defense of the software developers. Those manuals are pretty easy to also misread. And if you've been reading them for absolutely ages, and especially because this function is not exactly something you use every day, 
I can kind of see how it was glazed over, but either way, whoops. One of the oldest terms without a question in computing, other than things like RAM and CPU, has been Moore's Law. It's been a pretty much a constant buddy of ours, travelling along merrily. Unfortunately, over the past several years, perhaps we've forgotten to feed it or something, it's been lagging behind and sometimes we need to poke it with a stick. This has not been helped at all by the shift from 14nm down to 10nm. Of course, Intel themselves have announced that that's been delayed a couple of times. Finally, we're going to start seeing that emerge in 2019. But essentially, Moore's Law uh, would say that the number of transistors in a chip doubles over a certain time period. Unfortunately, that time period has been gaining slightly longer and longer and longer. And according to Wendell Brooks, he made a rather ominous statement. We are the eyes and ears of Intel. Yes, they are watching you. And we are looking five to ten years down the road. And he has also made an announcement that they have invested 72 million US dollars in 12 startups. Now, Wendell is the head of Intel's investment arm, Intel Capital. There are numerous interesting investments Intel have made, and perhaps one of the ones that's catching my eye the most is Lincian, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, Technologies. As I mentioned at the start of this video, they are based in California, and they believe that they have developed a working extreme UV, also known as EUV process, that could, at least in theory, reduce chips down to 2nm. And what the company have done is simulated the miniaturization of research technology which is currently really really big monster type of machines that require many megawatts gigawatts if you will of power and they have managed to shrink them down at least in theory to something that could be fit, uh, sat inside a regular size lab room mr fezza who is the ceo of the company believes that they can actually have a working machine in about three years and it is aiming to produce all of this by creating a new type of electron beam accelerator. One of the key issues, of course, from 14 to 10 nm has been cited numerous times by Intel CEO, and that is that they have had low yields and have had numerous manufacturing issues. So Intel have made two very important investments. The first of these two is Movilus, another company based in California, and it is claiming it has developed a way to design chips autonomously uh, that would be utilizing of course artificial intelligence and it by which it should be not only more efficient to produce them but also more efficient in terms of taking humans out of the equation and by which we should have more reliable chips and they will also be smaller as well and the last of the two will allow chips to be designed in an open architecture manner and heavily customizable and it will also mean that chips will be faster and cheaper its ceo is claiming that semiconductors that now cost 7.5 million each can be produced at one tenth of the price and on top of that not only can it be produced in a tenth of the price but it also could be produced in one fifth of the time anyway we have all of that said hopefully you have enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now